So you wanna make those cool looking animated outlines that grabs the attention of your audience while not looking, you know, bad? Well then you're in the right place because in this video I'm going to teach you how to make this sick looking animated outline effect that you can use to highlight objects or create this cool line chasing animation to add some pizzazz to your videos. All of that stuff and more coming up. But first if you're new here my name is Billy Ripka and I make weekly DaVinci Resolve tutorials about different effects, transitions, and workflows that'll help you become a better editor. So if you want to level up your editing skills click the subscribe button and the bell notification to stay up to date on the newest videos put out. But let's get into it. All right, so now that we're in DaVinci Resolve, we have our timeline, we got our clip, so we wanna add this animated outline effect to this bike right here. So really there is no other way to do this but to go into Fusion. I know some of you are fearful of the Fusion tab, but trust me, the worst thing that can happen is just not trying at all. So jump into Fusion and I'm gonna walk you step by step through this process. And also also, if you want to follow along with this video, you can download the footage via a link in the description for free. Just type in zero at the checkout and it is all yours. But if you love what I'm doing and you want to join with me in creating better content on this channel, then any amount you choose goes directly into creating higher quality videos. Anyways, now that we're in the Fusion tab, we have our normal media in one and our media out one. This is like the beginning and the end and we put our cool effects and stuff in between these two nodes. So the first thing we need to do is to track the bike so that when we finally make the outline, that it actually sticks to the bike and doesn't move all around and look separated. So to add in the tracker, we need to hit control and space bar and then type in planar tracker. Then to add it in, we'll go ahead and grab our node right here and holding shift, we can hover over the line and when it turns blue, we'll just let it go and it is added in like this. Now in the inspector tab, we're gonna change our tracker from point to hybrid, and then just leave all of the other settings the same. Next, go to the options tab right here, and we're gonna go down to trail length. And instead of having it set to five frames, we're gonna go ahead and bring it down to about two. This right here will just eliminate the crappy tracking points that we don't want. So now I'm gonna go back to the control tab right here and bring our playhead back to frame zero. Next, with the planar tracker still selected, we're gonna draw a mask around the object that we want to track which is the bike. It doesn't have to be an incredibly tight mask, it just has to accurately represent what we want to track our object to. So you can go ahead and just draw this rough mask outline around our bike like this. Then once you've done that, hit the track to end button right here, and then you'll see that it's gonna take our image and find all of the tracking points for the whole clip. Now I know some of you are gonna have an issue if you want the effect to start at like frame 50 or frame 500, because the planar tracker usually only works if you start from frame zero. But you can get around this if you go to the reference time right here. Instead of starting on frame zero, you can hit set on the frame that you want it to start at. And then from there, it'll work just fine for you. So now that we have our bike all tracked and stuff, we can go ahead and hit create planar transform right here. And since we have that planar transform, we don't need that planar tracker anymore. So get rid of that, we don't need it. So with this planar transform, I'm gonna grab the output and bring it over to the media one like this. Now by doing that, it's gonna automatically create a merge node. So now that we have our planar transform merged in, what we're gonna do is grab our background node right here and connect it to our planar transform form. But if you play the clip through, you can see that we have this problem right here where the background actually pulls up. So that means we will lose part of our outline and we do not want that. The reason for this is that our background is following and moving with our tracking data and the background itself is not big enough to fill that empty space. So what we'll do to fix this under our background before our planar transform, we can add in one more transform node like this and just scale it up ever so slightly. So now when we play it, you can see that the background completely fills the screen. So now that you've done that, click on background one and set the color to whatever you want it. So for me, I want yellow because quite honestly, it just looks cool. And then once the color is set, grab the B spline masking tool and add it in to the background node right here. And now you can see that our background has completely disappeared. Well. Not really. This is where your masking skills need to come into play because we need a really good and tight 
white mask around our bike. So get your ice packs out for your wrist. It is masking time. So I'm gonna zoom in and start creating a tight mask around our bike. So take your time and make it look good because trust me, it's going to be worth it. All right, so now that we've masked around our image, you can see that first, we found our background, and second, it's not an outline at all. So to create the actual outline, what we are gonna do is make sure that our B-spline is selected, and then go into the Inspector tab and uncheck Solid. Now we have nothing at all. Then in our border window, you can bring the size up just like this. And what this does is uses our background color to show the edge of the mask we just made. But one of the little issues that we have right here off the bat is the fact that the border goes over the man's leg. So it just looks horrible. It does not scream high quality, but we can fix it. What we're gonna do is click on our B-spline node and then go in and add another one. And then right under it, you can see that we have B-spline two. Then we're gonna go to the inspector tab and change our paint mode from merge to subtract. Now zoom in and mask out the area that we want subtracted. So I'm gonna mask around his leg. And now you can see that the outline looks like it's behind him and it just makes it look Mm, so much better. So far, this looks pretty good and you could use this in videos to highlight objects, but you could take it one step further and create this awesome looking line chasing effect like this. So to do that, we're gonna click on our B-spline one node and make sure that we are on frame zero. Now in the inspector tab, we're gonna add a keyframe under position and length. And then we're going to bring down our length to zero. So you can see that our line just disappears. Now, since we have our beginning point with nothing on the screen at all, we're gonna move forward and create an ending point. Now for this tutorial, I'm just gonna pick a completely random time. And then once you have it, we're gonna bring up the length all the way to one. Then under position, we'll bring it up to three. Position ultimately controls the amount of times that this line chasing animation will rotate around before it ends. So I don't want it to go around just once. I want it to go around three times. But of course you can make it rotate more or less just depending on the number you put in. And now we can see that we have this line chasing effect. So now that we have done that, we just wanna really make the line pop. Well, to do that, hit control and space bar and type in soft glow, and then just drag it into our node composition right here. Already you can see right off the bat that we have more of a glow now, but we can tweak it by bringing up our gain a little more and then play around with the threshold so you get the feel that you're going for. Now that we've done that, open up the spline tab right here and then show everything for B spline one. So our position and length. And then we'll hit fit to zoom right here and then highlight everything and hit S. S is just gonna make it look all smooth and stuff, just how we like it. Once you've done that, close out of the spline tab. The final thing to do is to click on B spline one and move over to the settings tab and then hit the checkbox next to motion blur and then drag the quality up to about five or so because we like that high quality motion blur. Do not add that choppy motion blur in my house. All right, so now that we've done that, let's see what we got. All right, so there you have it, a sick animated outline effect in DaVinci Resolve. If you thought this video was helpful, then give it a like and also share it with your friends so that they can add this animated outline into their videos too. So some of you may not know, but I do run my own editing business. Would you guys be interested in seeing the behind the scenes of that whole operation and me answering some of the most common questions that you have? Let me know in the comments below because I think it'd be kind of cool. Anyway, if you want more videos like this, click on the top playlist for all of my DaVinci Resolve tutorials or click on the bottom for a video that YouTube thinks that you would like. But until the next one, peace.